that this is these are the quantum leaps these are the steps forward yeah. and and it's like and i remember i wasn't listening and if you ever hear of the feather the brick in the truck and so i get bumped when i get in here when i get like this full i love supporting entrepreneurs in doing this in their business Hello and welcome to another episode of Never Look Back. I'm Matilda Morgan. I'm the host and I am so excited about this conversation today. And I've known um, this beautiful guest, Tegan, for quite a while now and we were shop neighbours and we even go into that story. And what really has been coming through to me the last day in which we talk about is these thing of being able to be ambitious women, um, having the drive and having the eyes on building empires and being in our being, what that looks like and really releasing the the sense of force um, and the sense of busyness and overwhelm around the doing, doing, doing actions. And, and it's such an interesting sensation. It's such an interesting sensation because as we've been taught, as we've experienced mostly in life um, through these few decades and, you know, since the kind of this kind of work culture, the hustle culture has existed, it feels counterintuitive. It feels, you know, I certainly feel like as I lean further and further into this way of being, because we're constantly in a, you know, on the journey, it's not like we've ever done it. Um, it's it often feels counterintuitive and often has felt like I am doing something wrong. I must be doing it wrong. Um, and what that is and what that comes down to is simply like the stories, the perceptions around societal norms around like what success has meant. And it often for me relates to the safety. So all the stories that I see around me of, you know, what has created success, um, of what should be of a business owner and entrepreneur and um, coach uh, is that it has to be in the doing, it has to be in the force, it has to be, you know, go, go, go. And it's simply not the case. So there's a lot of dissafety when even though there's a yearning, I know there was a yearning in my case to go the other direction, um, and to go like there has to be a better way because I hate with my body and soul um, this forceful doing 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 there has to be a better way it's still a sense of safety simply because my body I haven't experienced that before even though there's a yearning to go oh my god imagine if I could have and create a business like that and simply be magnetizing imagine if I had the space and energy that when the action came in and I got to act and choose to act, that it was super efficient, super effective. And it's it, it's because when we first lean into this, and it doesn't matter if you've got a seven figure business, eight figure, you know, six figure, just starting out. If you haven't experienced that, it's a sense of safety because your body's going all. Well, we don't know if that's going to be successful. And that is something that we really talk about in this conversation today. And it's something that I work with a lot of my clients with as well. Um, a lot of the things that I do, and it comes out of course in the visual image, the visual branding, all that kind of stuff, is what is the stuff that we get to get rid of? What are all the stories, all the things that we get to get rid of and actually come back into our, ourselves and go, oh, this is the way that I want to build it. Because a lot of people out there, even when they sign on with a coach or sign on with a mentor, um, if they don't do it with the intention that I'm going to seek your assistance and advice and I help you keep me accountable, if they go with the intention of you're going to save me um, or I'm going to copy exactly what you've done because it's worked for you, then often doesn't work. It comes into that force again. So what we're looking for is like, well, what's your way? What's your way look like? And how can we guide and support you to take those steps to actually move and embrace your way? Because that is scary as fuck. So it's a really fun conversation. Um, dive in, 
with T and Mel, uh, she's had an incredible journey over the last couple of years and um, incredible success. And remember, like, follow, subscribe, share with your friends and, um, you know, let us know your thoughts. Here we go. Um, we have been friends for a couple of years now. I'm so excited to bring her in to have this conversation. Um, and so who is Tegan Mal? So Tegan Mal, she's an incredible manifestation and energetics coach and speaker. She has supported and inspired thousands in our online events and speaking across Australia um, in large scale events like, such as Mind, Body, Spirit. You might have seen her in there as well. She always gives incredible talks on stage. Um, and it's all around how she can support you to refine reality and through energetics and manifestation and then create from that space. Um, so she is here, and I truly believe this as well, is here to help visionary entrepreneurs collapse time to enhance and optimize their lives and businesses so that they can live their joy. So freaking awesome to have you here, Tegan. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I am very much looking forward to our conversation in a <laughs> field for me yeah oh my god it's going it's it, our conversations are always crazy and tegan was just reminding me of um like three years ago filming you know similar conversations practicing for these kind of moments i feel in the future um which is i can't wait to hear that again as well um like so today so what i've been you know this is all about you right today and what we really want to know and what we really want to lean into and help women connect with is how they can be in this place of being rather than this place of doing and for me i term it as that never look back moment that never look back moment in time when there's this like this sometimes it's like a flip like it's a switch that flips sometimes it's like a process um where people like are, oh my god I'm done. I need, I want to be me. I want to show up as me and I'm going to lean into being me. I'm never going to look back um, into how I do this. So can you share a little bit about, you know, what's coming up for you? What moment stands out for you as that never look back moment? I love this question and I love contemplating it because I, I always notice that there's points on our timelines that are distinctive yet yeah, at the moment when they happen, you don't actually know that they are that moment. And then when you reflect back on them, they're like, oh, that's why that happened, this, 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 and this. And so these are the, the tipping points, the points of activation, the energetic points of, it's almost like a transmutation into a different level, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. It's one of the universal laws. And when, um, like, for me, there's been some huge pivotal moments and you touched on we used to be shop neighbours. Yeah. And yeah. I remember there was one, there was a pivotal moment uh, that I had and it was a it was an ordinary day I was going to yoga with my partner at the time and um, I'd had this vision and this dream of opening a retail shop and um, it just kind of sat in the back of my, my head and I was like I'd done a lot of markets I'd done lots of shops and markets and all that stuff and I had just done my yoga teacher training and I was going to a class and I spoke to my teacher there the yoga teacher and I was like oh where can we go for lunch in Noosa we're in Noosa at the time. Yeah. And they both pulled out their phones and they're both, they're both looking up places and almost simultaneously, literally, they both pulled up the same place and were like, okay, let's go there. And I was in this little arcade. Mm. And so my partner, and I, Matt and I sat down in this cafe and right in front of me were these two empty shops. Mm -hmm. And my body got goosebumps. And so I get goosebumps when I get a yes, when I get like this full body. Yes. And in that moment, I was like, huh. And there was a sign on the door that said to contact. So I, I contacted the the owner and within three weeks, I was in that shop mm. and I had a shop my retail jewelry brand. And that moment was a pivotal moment of literally going, oh, I literally just trusted and surrendered. Yeah. And this is, this has happened so many times. And I talk about that in uh, manifestation. It's a moment of like, it's almost like this, switch from one reality to another mm. jump the timeline through yeah. making a decision the action yeah and oh, there's so many i can talk about many 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 but i know that you we talked about having a shop next to each other and that's how we met because <laughs> i made that decision literally we ended up in the same arcade as each other so 
potent, so potent. Mm. I, I love that you're aware too, because it's like another question that I love to ask is like, where do you feel it? And you, you just mentioned it's like you, you know, goosebumps, you feel it all over. It's like there's this like specific point because I feel, you know, like so many humans, not just women, have lost trust in being able to access that point of clarity within their body. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if you're you know, CEO of a you know, huge corporation or if you're, you know, a mum or if you're, you know, you know, going through high school. Um, we all have the ability to really connect in with that. So where do you feel it? And how do you know, I guess, like that trusting aspect of it? Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, I can talk for <laughs> hours on <laughs> Definitely can talk. Asking the this. right person. <laughs> I've talked in hours on this. Um, so for me personally, where I feel things, I get intuitive yeses. I get goosebumps. I'm quite intuitive. I'll hear words. I'll hear like, like I'll see things before they happen. I'll just know them. So I'll tap in essentially into all the different clairs. Like if you've heard of like clair, clairsentient, clairvoyance, all those, as we can call them that way, or we can t- talk about intuitive nudges. Mm. And we're all different. And it's like starting to recognize what these little internal signs are for you and what they're recognizing because these synchronistic signs will play out in different areas of your body and so if you like maybe something like that gut feeling your your belly when does that played out for you do you know do you remember or when do you get goosebumps and starting to track when these synchronicities start to play out because it's like that's how i started to recognize them like you might get a ringing in your ear and you're like, oh, the ring in my left ear means this, or, or, uh, or whatever it is. It's like your signs are unique to you. Like you can literally look up in books about, you know, signs, like what does 111 mean, you know, what is this, or what are these signs from the universe, or what do these goosebumps mean, however they're actually unique to you. Because mm. it's like what's at the time that you receive them. Yeah. And so the question, like, and the other question that you're asking is like how can – how can you recognize your signs? Mm. Recognize them for you. Yeah. And it's just practice and really tuning in and mm. being present. Because well, I know when you're like, when we're rushing and we're doing doing the things, yeah. Like doing so much, we can miss the messages. Mm. So it's like we come back into like presence, like activate with breath and be present and just go, okay, what's going on? And then breathe. What's interesting is that you hear and feel and see more. Mm, yeah, yeah. What did it feel like to you when you were like first leaning into to trusting those nudges that you get? I have a really cool story, actually. I have a really cool story. Um, <laughs> whenever I tell this story, people are like what? Um, so I don't know if you know this, but I did an energetic healing diploma. And I was with like energy stuff. And and this is before I was really aware of like different aspects of how I tune into things. Mm-hmm. And so I was doing the processes. However, there's some things that hadn't yet activated. And so I remember one time that I was doing a practice, I was practicing on a client. Yeah. And we had like a school in Sydney that we're in. And I was doing like the the process, the energetic healing, and I had my hand above her body and I was going over each of the spots that we're taught to go over. Like if you've heard of Reiki or energy balancing, that's essentially what we're doing. And then I get this message, I get up to like her neck area. Mm. And then I hear this voice that I've never heard or paid attention to before. It was like, I'm going to do this. Go to her knees now. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like, I just, done the knees and so I'm like okay hear it again go to the knees now I'm like it was this deep voice I'm like what and so I did it I went over to her knees and just went over again and then after the session I said to her what's going on with your knees Mm. and she's like oh I have to tell you I fell off my bike (laughs) oh wow I couldn't see she was wearing pants and she was wrapped up like it yeah so in that moment I was like full goosebumped I heard a voice. I was like, oh, mm. I, and that voice comes through 
Yeah. But if I need to hear something, and sometimes it'll hear for others, mm-hmm. then I'll know what the difference is. Yeah. Then I'll feel it. I'll just, it's such certainty. Mm. This powerful, certain voice. That's a different voice that I usually hear. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. So I haven't heard that story before. And like, I love, like, what I love about, you know, talking with women and, you know, women who have done incredible things like yourself is, is, this form of leadership, this form of, you know, the integrated feminine, I call it, like where we can listen to those nudges and they don't have to be logical. They don't have to be from external sources. And it's like, how have you, how, like, can you give us some examples of how this has, you know, come through in business from this being and intuitive, like listening? How has it come through? Yeah. In I find this happens a lot in business because mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever experienced it yourself. It's like there's like you feel like you're pushing something, <laughs> like pushing something. Like I've had examples where I have been pushing a product mm-hmm. um, in in like whether like it's been like this has happened lots of times. Like actually just pushing something. I'm like, how is this not working? Like I'm pushing this particular thing. And then I'll go to do something else and then it just flows. Mm. Like, yeah. oh, like really recognizing where you're pushing and where you're being open to receive. So I like to I, I like to play with the energetics in my business. Yeah. And tune and go, okay, so where where am I being in allowing and allowing for the magic to come in? Because what I find when I find that pushy energy comes from is filling yeah. up my time too much, doing too much. Yeah. And being in this. Yeah. And I notice I notice this happen. Um, okay. We're back. We just had a little little time out there um, for audio. Uh, so <laughs> we're talking about it's a second for you guys. It's a, been a minute for us. Um, we're talking about um, that force um, and noticing the the energetics and business and you know, I was like, my next question for you, and this might help, and you can go wherever you want, is um, like what it looked like, what acts actually occurred, the actions that occurred when it was from force, which sounded like the busyness, the, the stress overwhelmy kind of stuff, um, compared to the allowance of the flow and the receiving. I have a really juicy story, like juicy. Right. Bring it. <laughs> um. <laughs> So I had a retail shop in Burley mm. and I was in full force activation. I was like in force. I was like, yeah, like, like going all in. And so I was steamrolling, rolling, is that a word? Steamrolling in. And I was like, yep, we're going to get this. It's going to be great. This is number shop number two. And I, was, I had this huge vision. Mm. And I still had a big vision. Yeah. And it, softened more into the feminine and so what I was doing is I was no one's going to stop me which is quite a masculine energy and so when I look at like the energetics of manifestation we roll between the two yeah so we roll between taking action and it's like that masculine decision and finding that flow and yeah. then taking more action and then surrendering so we're doing that however I was in this full force like full yeah. masculine so the law of polarity states that when one goes up, the other must go down. Yeah. And so the thing that actually happened yeah. is our shop ended up closing down. Mm. Can you like, like, let's start, take a step back. Like, let's really paint a picture for people because I feel, you know, when people are, some people just don't realize because they're so in it. Right. So yeah. what did, like, let's get really tangible. Like what did <laughs> a week in the life of full force, you know, Tegan at the Burley shop look like? Uh, Full force, I was designing multiple products all at once. Mm -hmm. I was also still running my online courses. I was staying in there to, like, in the store to record things. I was making products. I was managing a team. I think there was nine people in the team at the time. I was running ads. I was, like, like doing all the things and managing a big team as well as, oh, we'd also just done a pop-up shop in a local shopping center. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I kept saying, what else can we do? 
what else? What else? And I was getting ready to to speak at Mind Body Spirit Festival as well. And there's this big build up of lots of things. It's like, oh, what else can we do? We're going to amplify our marketing. We're going to amplify this. I uh, just done a photo shoot. Like there's heaps going on. And that was that's a that is a lot of stuff to hold. Mm. Like in the aspect of it, it's not just running a shop. Mm. It was running an entire brand, and we were online as well. So yeah. that's also the team packing orders making jewelry all of this stuff mm. and like speaking events yeah and then i remember i wasn't listening and if you ever hear of the feather the brick in the truck yeah yeah <laughs> it's a great one but tell, tell, let everyone else know yes great so the feather is you get a little message just like a little nudge just like hey mm. do something like okay i'm gonna keep going doing the same thing yeah brick it's like a brick falls on you and it goes do something different and then <laughs> then suddenly the truck comes is like do yeah. something different i was driving to the shop yeah i was driving to the shop mm-hmm. to prep for mind body spirit festival i was thinking about all the things i had to ha- listen to my words i had to do i was doing all these doing all the things and as i was at the stop sign I was sitting there, I was looking left, looking right, just thinking about things, looking left, looking right. I, I sat there and then I could, nothing was there. And I drove out mm. and then boom, someone sped around the corner and T-barred me. Yeah. And in that moment, what was I thinking about? I was thinking about all the things I had to do. Yeah. Um, and if that's not a sign from the universe to slow down, mm. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know. and what's even more interesting and funny I'm, I'm saying funny because it's funny now because like what it's like oh look I was fine he was fine we we're all fine like what happened was the car got pushed to the left yeah. I'm like I can't make this up mm. oh god I saw it drifted across <laughs> it was like Tegan be in your feminine yeah yeah I remember that day it was a big day <laughs> And so what I did is like, okay, I'm gonna go home, have a bath, and mm. ended up to the shop and we packed it up and all like synchronistically mm-hmm. things played out perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfectly. And then I remember I remember the next day, um, I was speaking on stage mm-hmm. and that was the day that I found out that uh, we'd actually been locked out of the shop mm. and it was I'd literally walked off stage speaking to the largest crowd which was in my feminine essence mm-hmm. I was I was in the space this beautiful space of all these amazing people around mm. you were present there yet the polarity the swing that we talk about and I share this story at India and my most spirit. Mm-hmm. That swing was like, oh, and you know what? It, all it took was like we were actually only behind on our rent by a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And it was the universe going, hey, here's a truck here, T bar in the car, and then next day this happens. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're a business owner, I'm sure like this has happened to many people. And that when I tell the story, so many people going, oh, this has happened. Or something like this has happened and so what i'm saying is there's a sign if if you listen to the signs that are happening because mm. i tell you what that sign was the best thing that happened mm-hmm. yeah it's actually a gift everything just played out just went like, sorted itself out mm-hmm. and what happened after that is i softened mm. the- so how has like how have you because you've gone you know you've pivoted massively since then which was coming anyway um and as we know and the universe is helping out in its way um how have you since like changed and lean in because i've noticed it i've noticed it over the last couple of months in particular it's like leaning into your being um how has that like showed up in you know what does a week for Tegan look like now compared to hustle Tegan <laughs> um and how does it feel well 
what hustle tea needs to do was send a lot of energy externally out. Mm -hmm. It was almost like pew, 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 pew. And this Tegan holds it. Like the question is, how can you hold? Mm. How can you hold the capacity to be mm. with trust? So this, since then, I've been playing with the energetics and diving deeper into energetics, and and going, oh, what can I release to create this? Yeah. How can I play with the law of polarity? How can I play with the law of seasons? How can I be in the energetics to amplify the opportunities and synchronicities? And they happen. And it's blown my mind about what has transpired when I've softened mm -hmm. and allowed us to just guide me. Yeah. This is where I think like one of the biggest gifts. Yeah. And what it feels like. So the question that you ask is what it feels like. It feels in flow it feels soft it feels aligned it feels present yeah and every every day i sit there and hang go how can i be of service mm. how can i be present like, i find a presence in myself and if i find tension mm -hmm. like how can i hold it yeah and i i do these energetic scans and find the spaces that i am recognizing could be the next doorway to open to shift into something new and these are like the, this is these are the quantum leaps these are the steps forward yeah. and and it's like being vulnerable being open that's a gift of the feminine oh my god Very to you is like a gift of the feminine yeah it's like many people would be like i can't share this i feel shame about it. i feel sad i feel vulnerable it's actually be able to embrace and embody and and experience all of you all mm. of you and it's the vulnerability and the openness that you have yeah whoever like to you listening mm. and watching is what's actually going to create more magnetism in your life oh my god 100 percent. and i just like when i like this has just been dropping in as you've been speaking as well like um it can feel so counterintuitive and i know i've felt it as well because you go well you know we're ambitious women let's just get that straight we're ambitious women we've got you know what you'd term as drive um and we're building empires however like um you know it, it can be so counterintuitive especially when you're leaning into this place of being um that you're going but it it can feel like you're letting go or um, sacrificing at some times. Like this is how, what I get from some women that I work with. They're like, but I don't want to sacrifice everything that I want to create. Um, I don't want to, you know, do that. It's like, well, this isn't talking about sacrificing. This is talking about like, how can you be, as Tegan was saying, and holding the capacity of being and who you are so that you can receive. This is where the quantum leaps happen. They can't come clearly or sustainably when you're in the doing and the force. So when you feel clear into this being, that's when you get the capacity to, you know, like receive a million dollar deal to you know speak on stage and feel completely authentic and at ease and in your confidence in front of five thousand people this is you know that is the kind of space where we can really create um, with that clarity and also the strategy of it so i just wanted to speak into that a little bit um because it is so counterintuitive especially as you know this the masculine more kind of structured culture of work has kind of arisen around and this is talking about that you know the feminine essence of being and from that place of being really intentionally acting in that place would you agree with that or what would you say oh yeah 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 um absolutely i teach like so, like intentionally act as a person that you are mm. already yeah and i will say that you're becoming and mm. i disagree because it's who you are mm. and if you towards the future and you are becoming them then you'll continue to mm. become them so what it's experiencing the the version of, of you now yeah. and having holding the capacity of energetically 
feeling it. And I just want to touch on what you were talking about just now mm. as well. And um, we, we as women, I'm saying it's counterintuitive. Mm. And we, we as women can feel like it's counterintuitive or like to push and we're like, if I don't do it, who will? If I'm not going to do it, then who's going to do it for me? Or how am I going to do it? I ha- I want to know how. Well, the thing is, when we can really trust and surrender and take the action, mm. then we are so supported. We mm. are so supported. And it, I, you don't know what's going to happen. The universe has a, like a cosmic sense of humour. Yeah. It is I. I hear giggles and it's just like, ha ha, here we go. It's like, we signed up for this. Yeah. And so attempt to control it. I've got an example that I love to to share with my students, like hopping into an Uber. So if you hop into a car and you're like into an Uber and you're like, I um, I would like to go to this destination. And they're like, great, I'll take you there. And you go, actually, can you turn this direction and then go that way and then go for, I'm getting this, this way. Mm. Are they going to love you as a passenger? Mm. Or can you? there and trust that you're going to get to your destination you probably will have a really enjoyable conversation if you chat to the uber driver rather than like directing them on where to go and you know what that that's the best way oh my god it's so it's so nice to go oh uh, i know that decision has been made already by me it's not you're not disempowering yourself by going oh I, I need to direct the Uber driver and now they're, they're obviously they're driving the car. However, it's like you've made the decision to get in the car and you've made the decision, you've directed them um, to the, the final destination, you know where you want to go. So it, it's like, as you're saying, like releasing the how of getting there oh. because the Uber driver has probably been on the street a little bit more than you have in the, in the moments of that time. So you know, you could be like, oh, you know, I usually go that way. And the Uber driver's like, no, there was just a car accident down there. It's blocked up. I'm going to go my way. And you you don't know. So it's like trusting the universe is going to provide that how. Um, And like one way that I really personally, I leaned into this was, you know, when you look back as like, we've touched on this a few times, I'm like, I'm realizing, you know, even if it's a freaking truck, that every moment has been perfect in that. And it's like, so once I personally realized that, I'm like, even though, you know, would I want to relive some of the moments? No. However, they've been perfect in the graduation to where I am now. So I'm like, therefore, every moment in the future is also going to be perfect for that moment. And absolutely. And the, and to recognize that the moment that you have is now. Mm. Like, if we actually, uh, if we spend the time and we invest our time into the past and how we've done the things, it's great to recognize what's happened and the and the synchronicity play outs of how they've been because it's fun. It's like interesting. It's like oh, of course that played out that way and this way and this way and it's like following that map. And then if we live in the future of going, and if I get this, then I'll get this, then I get this, where living externally to the present moment mm. and the present. Moment time that things will manifest yeah. and so when we're in the present moment we are the gift we are the presence and this is this is the key is when we can experience our reality from a place of feeling mm-hmm. uh, um how can i do this or how have i done this before because when we're in a how and the how we're living in either the past mm-hmm. or the future. Mm-hmm. so when we're in a, i trust and i receive with grace and i allow in whatever it is that's here for me now with action, with inspired action, we create a magic storm. We create this perfect moment of being in it, which Mm. then aligns with us in that presence that things will shift, that things are shifted and they already are there. Mm. That makes any it will drop in, in the perfect time (laughs) for any, for everyone. It's like, it's that, Oh my God. It's that such, trust in in and releasing any kind of like handle hold you have on any notion um or any form of have to must 
that kind of thing. It's it's crazy. And the trick, and the trick is, one of the tricks I, I share hmm. is I love this this trick this is powerful so like actually write this one down is notice what has the biggest tension or the biggest mm. like around it whether it's like I really love this so if I was like I really love this bottle mm. or I really don't like this microphone mm. like okay these are your signs mm -hmm. these are the signs of something that once shifted could sh create an energetic flow forward mm. so it allow you to more because it's that attachment the attachment to the how the attachment to the things the attachment to either really good or really like i don't know if i like it mm. that, that creates a ten the attention and mm. if we, what we can hold in our inner tension different more we can go okay I can lean into this it's like diving through the waves yeah so if we dive into the waves we know that we'll end up on the shore at some point yeah regardless of we're throwing around however if you go I really don't like being thrown around you start like splashing about and it's just gonna it's gonna make things worse yeah and if you just lean in and trust how much more fun is it oh my god so much more fun like it, it gets to be really playful and like a question that is popping into my head, I think it popped in, it just popped in again from like before was, so there is, even from a place of being, there is those acts, those externalizing of the acts, right? Where like, you know, for example, I get to be, something comes in, it says, you know, send this person email, the external act is send the email, right? And you're talking about the being in the force and stuff. So how do you know when it's like you know what it feels like it's a stretch is the force however i still trust that this is the right action to continue and test a little bit more um compared to you know being the complete force that you were in um during the the burly shop era because there are some things where it's like the universe is literally just testing i i, I term it like testing your want and your desire for it um you know like uh, you send an email to this person and for some reason that it, it doesn't send and it's like it's not for us to go oh uh, we're not meant to send the email it's like how do you know when to lean in and like just like give it a bit more energy a bit more energy into that act does that make sense yeah are you the question is hmm. are you closing or are you trimming so imagine if you're like creating a, a garden, mm -hmm. are you going, of course, you're like, I've got this bulldozer, I'm going to knock it all down, I'm going to, I don't care what it, whatever it takes. Mm. Going, how can I refine it? How can I refine this? Yeah. Universe how yeah. can I like make this like be more beautiful? Mm -hmm. And so like, a like if you've got an email, for example, and you're sending an email, bounces, it's like, oh, how does that feel? Mm. I can just, contact them in a different way yeah. and if it like it just I'm uh, sending like uh, five different emails just not working no one's replying to me that energy of like oh how can I get through it's like calling calling okay slow breathe mm -hmm. and be in the moment of what's next step for me mm. and I, I personally notice the energy of expansion so when I feel more mm. then I go if I feel like contracted, like it's like, yeah. oh, I just want to get through this. That's the moment that it's fine for me to pause and breathe. Mm. Like pause. Because yeah. otherwise that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that distinction. I love the the metaphor of the garden as well. I haven't heard that one before. It's really, really yeah. lovely. Because like, yeah, because this is interesting. I feel like people who are early on in this, the journey of being, and you can call it, you know, manifesting, whatever it is, feminine um, being that they kind of go, they can let things off a bit lightly. They go, they slingshot to the other way. Um, and, you know, I often see it, for example, with people that leave corporate who have been such like masculine, go, go, go. And then they're like, I spend every day on my, on the beach now every day i don't want any kind of form of anything but then they're not fulfilled in that 
And then it's like such an interesting practice to get back into their being. That's the polarity. Mm. And so that's a swing. So if you've got super masculine, super driven, like that drive, I'm like, which way is the camera going? The super drive. And then you've also got, uh, I'm trying to make a seesaw. Let's do it like this. So you've got a super drive and then you've got like not much space and peace. Mm -hmm. So when you switch, it's going to swing in the polar opposite way. Yeah. There's like an energy doesn't like disappear. It just transforms. And there's always something else playing out. There's always an opposite playing out. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how can you find that equilibrium, that middle ground, that little bit here rather than the extremes? Mm -hmm. And so being, being in that that space of like you like okay so for example a dog like we can hear the dogs barking but the dogs like will go will either might go there's some dogs out there that might be like bah, 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 bark, or there might be ones that are just like super quiet and laying back mm-hmm. but it's like that how can you be the one which has has that full integrated personality where it's like oh i'll bark when i need to bark yeah when there's someone or I will be gentle and I'll be kind and I'll be loving at the other times. And it's just like being able to know when when to utilise what. Because mm. whereas like you're always in your feminine, there's some point it's going to just go, jump. Mm-hmm. The law of polarity states and what goes up must go down yeah. and vice versa. So how can you yeah. be in that little balance of going, oh, I can use, know when to be in my masculine, might be my business, might be like taking action, sending those emails. And then knowing when to rebalance it out and be in the space of talking about how to optimize your reality through playing with the law of polarity. Mm. So like the energetics, this is literally only one of the energetic laws. Yeah. Um, the universe. It's like, how can you really optimize what what you're here to do? Like if you're in like full force, mm. recognize that, going, hmm, how can I optimize where I am by going, oh, maybe perhaps in this moment mm. I can be more feminine and then oh maybe i can utilize more of my masculine then mm-hmm. so the 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 common misconception that i see is women going i don't want to be in my feminine i don't want to be in my masculine or i don't want to be in my feminine right i don't want to be too feminine i don't want to get anything done or i don't want to be too masculine because i don't want to be too masculine <laughs> yeah. you, you get you get to be both mm-hmm. you get to be, that's the full integration piece and it's, you get to be both and it's the art of refinement and being able to utilize both. It's like pulling the strings and yeah. finding that little balance, a little dance of how to utilize that to yeah. really refine your reality, essentially. Oh, right. 100%. And that's when they, you know, when you hear the saying, like, the person who has the most flexibility has the most power in the room. Like, that is exactly right. Being able to tap in. And this, you know, obviously we're speaking more to women here. But it's like, that's the same for men as well like them being able to access their feminine, um, those kind of people have incredible power and it's, it's being able to tap into like when and refine and just like, and, you know, to see and feel what's actually happening. Um, I feel like this is a really good time. Like what's happening next for Tegan? Like share, like where are you going? Because I know you've got some really exciting things happening and how can people connect with you? Yeah, so I've got lots of uh, events and retreats coming up mm. as well. I've got my mastery group, I like for anyone that really wants to refine what's going on, re- their reality and everything. And like you can connect with me uh, on my website, which is teganmel.com. Mm-hmm. And I do have lots of free resources in there as well for anyone that's really starting their mm-hmm. energetics and the manifestation journey, which I feel is really potent, especially... Mm-hmm. Um, the med- the meditation that I've got on there about tapping into your intuition. So if you're curious more about uh, what we were talking about at the very beginning about the goosebumps and mm. knowing what what your messages are, that has been so potent for many, many, many people. I've been getting messages going. I've been on some of the platforms and this has been one of the most realizations I've had. So definitely jump into that one. Yeah. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I love to hang out there um, at uh, Tegan Mel, so Instagram at Tegan Mel, you put it in the show notes, I'm sure. Yes, and yes. and yeah, I I also would love to know um, 
I'd love to know if I, from whoever or from you listening mm-hmm. are watching what you create, what you start to sh- like see shifts in your reality. Like this me excites me. I love it. It inspires me. I love supporting entrepreneurs in doing this in their business. Like because it's like that's what I've done, and I like really fine tune things. It's yeah. like how can you create that mastery in your business? through that refinement like that's to me is this is where this magic it's not just about manifesting cars and houses all this stuff it's about really optimizing and refining so you can literally have that that extra time freedom and and that clarity to live your life doing the beautiful things that you love and creating the impact you're here for yeah uh, I love that and yeah it's so powerful I agree like Tegan's a master at being able to tap into that and guide people in that as well um, so that they really come at it from a a place of trust and a place of you know uh, almost like joyous experimentation because it is experimentation and it gets to be joyous in that aspect when we move through um, some of the energetics with that and that it's there's so much more to it than you realize as well it's like you know um it gets to the point of like you don't know what you don't know and i feel like you know there's so much out there about manifestation as you know like you know manifest the car yada 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 um it, what we've talked about today even just you know that layer one of manifestation proven principles is like there's so much to it and so much you can move through and refine to get things faster and faster and faster and to also become super clear which also removes a lot from your plate you know when you get that mental overload of you know thinking about a million things at once so it's almost like you go through and you clear out you know the 999,000 that you actually don't need in there so that you can really clearly and succinctly refine on that one thing that you actually get to do and that's where the beauty comes in so um so yeah definitely go follow me follow, i was about to say follow matilda um follow tegan <laughs> Um, follow me too. Um, follow Tegan. Um, have a look at those resources and really connect with her. So I know she's always up for having a conversation on Instagram as well. So as well, what would the like if sharing to you know the women and the people you know moving through this deepening of being? Um, what would be one piece of advice that you could share? Um. One piece of being to mm. one piece of advice to be more present with yourself mm. is to come back to this moment now. Mm. How can you be of service to you so you can be of service to others? And it's like, I take that moment in the day. If you feel like there's so much going on, my biggest tip for you is to do the opposite and pause. It will be a game changer. It will be a game changer even if it's for 30 seconds or a minute just yeah. take a moment whether it's breathing and to regulate your nervous system or to be more present mm. just sit there and say, how can i be of service mm. yeah if you get a message or you don't get a message doesn't matter the act of stopping going back into that moment will be a game changer mm. i love that so something that really of being look like and trusting yourself to maybe counterintuitively to what needs to be done do that thing to be in that place and for me i know you know when tegan's talking about like coming into the present being for me i know that when i decide that i absolutely have no time no time to go to the gym, no time to nourish myself with good food, no time to go for a walk on the dog with like walk on the beach with my dog. That's exactly the time when I must, I must, I, I shift the language um, within myself to go from I, I get to, to it becomes a must um, in that moment, because I know in the, over the period of even 24 hours to the week, a week, 
that that's going to be more beneficial for me than and more productive for me than anything else than anything else from it than you know forcing myself to do the thing or forcing them because that allows me the space to be in that and absolutely so what i often do will take a deep breath and really breathe in and allow myself to sink into heart and body because often we'll get stuck in head in doing that so it's like how can we be in body and from the place of body take those intentional steps forward or back it doesn't need to be forward or back so the point of these conversations right and this is what i really want to invite you to do and you would have noticed is everyone does this differently everyone feels this differently everyone notices it differently and so it's what's your way of doing this and whether you've been on this journey of being for years um, whether you're new to it it doesn't matter where you're at and you know what kind of level figure business you have it's being able to be open to listening and experimenting with all these different ways so and then from that that you can move in with an awareness of going great i'm going to take that way I'm going to take that way. I'm going to take that way. I'm going to blend it together in this beautiful my way. And that is what a lot of, you know, Tegan's work is with clients, what my work is with clients. It's shifting through it all and going, well, what is your way? How do you get to be? And how do you recognize and trust that being? So it's really, really exciting. So her links are in the notes below. So go check her out. Um, you know, experiment with those beautiful resources that she's got and have a chat with her um, on Instagram, especially if you are in that stage of really going, what's next? How can I, you know, really refine and create my ideal business in life for me and the joy of me? Um, and remember, like, subscribe and follow.